One of the most difficult things to, to teach is the idea of short selling. Most of us have owned equities at some point and are familiar with the buying process, but many of us have not shorted equities. So the purpose of this clip is to explore the mechanics of actually short selling. What does that actually mean? Now, the usual transaction for an equity involves the purchasing of the equity. And this is the so-called long position. So for example, if I buy uh, some IBM at let's say $200 a share, this means that um, I purchase 100 shares because we transact almost always in round lots and for stocks the lots are usually a hundred shares so this means that I would buy 100 shares at two hundred dollars a share so the total outlay would be twenty thousand dollars this is how one would purchase a stock now when one purchases a stock you are betting on the price of the stock to go up. So if the stock goes to $300, it means that we would achieve a capital gain of 50%. So remember the difference between the new price 300 minus the old price 200 divided by the old price and that equals 50% gain. So when we go long or when we purchase, when we buy, it means that we believe the prospects of the firm are very favorable and we think the price is going to go up. Now, when we short, we're betting on the opposite scenario. So, one sells stock short when one believes that the price is going to go down. And selling short is a way to benefit from the price going down. So let's go through an example. And let's continue with our example of IBM trading at $200 a share. Suppose that I want to short um, to 100 shares of IBM at $200 a share. So I really think that the prospects for IBM are not that good over the short term. And um, there's always somebody out there that will want to buy shares of IBM. And suppose it's you. You disagree with me. You think the prospects for IBM are quite favorable. So this is uh, kind of a stylized way to envision what happens with uh, short selling. You could actually go to the market and buy 100 shares of IBM for $20,000. Instead, um, I agree to sell you 100 shares of IBM for $200 a share. Okay, you pay me $20,000, and I give you a piece of paper that says uh, anytime you actually want the certificates, the official certificate that says IBM, you can have it anytime. So you pay me $20,000. So this is identical you actually going into the market and buying 100 shares of IBM. Now, suppose that the price of IBM goes down. Well, this is a good scenario for me because I've shorted IBM. And notice that I really haven't done anything other than give you a piece of paper that says that I'm good for 100 shares of IBM. Suppose the price goes down and it goes down dramatically, for example, it goes from 200 to 100. And you say, I've had enough, I want to sell, this is a big enough loss for me. So you call me and say that uh, I want those shares, I want to sell them immediately. So what do I do? I go into the market, I buy 100 shares of IBM. They're trading for $100. 
My total cash outlay is $10,000. Buy the stock and I hand you the certificates. And for you, you can sell the stock and you're going to take a loss equal to $10,000. Remember, you purchased for $20,000, you sold for $10,000. Now what about me? Well, I had $20,000 cash in at the beginning. And then in order to fulfill the short obligation, I had to go and spend $10,000. So my gain is exactly equal to your loss. For me, I have made a profit. And the profit is equal to $10,000. For you, you've taken a loss. And the loss is exactly equal to $10,000. So any time that you short sell, you are betting upon the price going down. Now, the example that I gave was an example where the price actually went down. You should beware of short selling because sometimes when you short, the price may not go to the direction that you anticipated. For example, suppose that the price of IBM didn't go down but went up. So suppose it went from $200 to $300. And suppose that you decided to um, sell the stock at 300 to take your profits. And you telephone me and say, I want the certificates now, I want to sell now. Well, it means that I have to go into the market and buy 100 shares at $300. That's going to cost me $30,000. Now, remember that I got paid only 20000 at the beginning. So 20000 in, 30000 out, means a loss of $10,000. But for you, you purchased at $200 and the price went to $300. So your profit is $10,000. Exactly the opposite of my loss. Now, you can probably see that um, short selling is different from long selling in the following respect. If I buy the stock, if I'm long in the stock at $200, the maximum loss that I can sustain is $200. The price could go to zero. That's possible. For each share, I could lose $200. So the maximum liability, if I purchased 100 shares, would be $20,000. And I've got all of the possible upside. Now, if you're short selling, your maximum loss is not $20,000. Actually, um, your maximum profit is $20,000. Your maximum loss could be unlimited. So if the price of the stock jumped from $200 to um, $1,000, then the loss that you're looking at is $80,000. And IBM uh, is probably not a good example for the stock price going from $200 to $1,000. But you can imagine perhaps short selling a stock that has a low uh, um, share price, like a dollar or a dollar fifty, and something happening where the price goes from a dollar fifty to a hundred dollars. Short selling could easily bankrupt you. So you have to beware that with short selling, there's unlimited liability because the stock price could go uh, as, as high as is possible. Whereas when you purchase a stock, when you purchase a stock, your liability is limited to the actual amount that you um, put out to buy the stock.